Streetwear is defined as casual clothing of a style worn especially by members of various urban youth subcultures. These subcultures include skaters, hip-hop enthusiasts and the Japanese street and fashion community. Originally formed in California through the surf and skate communities that would come into the shops, notably with an open plan, from the beach so they could ride in on their skateboards, buy something and be on their way. This is even stretched to some shops having skate parks inside them. Today, the streetwear community is dominated by big brands such as Supreme, Bape and Stussy, which were voted as the top streetwear brands by Complex Magazine in their top 50 greatest streetwear brands of all time. But streetwear is more than just these hype brands. I'm Adam. My opinion on fashion at the minute, there's like two kind of sides to it. There's the wearing all like the high beach stuff, but then there's the other side where people mix it with like stuff from charity shops and will spend like five quid on a jumper of, of some sort and then mix it with like some Nike shoes and stuff, which could cost a hundred quid. And obviously it's not about the cost, it's about how it looks. But I think fashion's in a good spot when it comes to that kind of stuff because people are having to shop at charity shops and find more outlandish things to stand out from the crowd. And I think it's kind of pushed people into a bit of a weird one where they, they can either uh, opt to just look like everyone else or they can, you know, kind of spice things up and, and put their own spin on stuff, really. What do you think of like high-end brands like Gucci and Versace making clothes that look like clothes from charity shops but then the charging prices that are um, stuff. With terms to Gucci, I don't rate Gucci clothes to be honest. Just full stop. I think it's I think it's a boring brand, and I think people just buy it for the brand. But if you're going to talk about like comparing it to like stuff that looks like charity shops, like yard sale looks like something out of a yard sale. And I think when they're trying to charge for the same price as charity shops when it comes to that kind of clothes, I personally wouldn't buy it. Like if I'm going to get something that's branded that brand's got to be front and centre on the, on the clothes. Yard sale, it's kind of a bit more skewed. But I don't know, I think I'd rather shop at a charity shop anyway and just go charity shopping because you never know what you're going to find. You know, you look online, you see what you like and then, you know, it goes from there. But I think what Yard Sale are doing and Golf Le Fleur as well, other brands like Grandma Wolf and stuff, kind of like stick into a theme, if that makes sense. So Yard Sale looks like stuff you would buy at a Yard Sale. Golf looks like what people wear to play golf like it fits in with the brand and i think when a brand has like a kind of a theme that they stick to i think that's sick tell us some of your, your favorite brands favorite brands stussy just because it's like affordable it's affordable clout so yeah. it's all good pre obviously they drop some hot stuff who else do you prefer actual designs or like box logos i think box logos are boring as yeah. like people just buy them for the box logo I think the, the designs that they make, especially the winter stuff, is is a lot more interesting to look at. And, it, it, you know, it's kind of like, you know it's supreme, but you'd only know it's supreme if you actually follow the brand. Each of these brands had humble beginnings and were endorsed by a new subculture wanting to express themselves in a new way to cultures in the past. Gone with the days of hippies, punks and skinheads, a new subculture had emerged. In the 21st century, a new group was created the Millennials, a new generation driven entirely by equality and acceptance. This new outlook on society had birthed a new fashion trend, individuality. This form of expression has allowed cultures such as drag to be much more accepted and idolised. In a similar way to the mods of the 1960s, the youth today are infatuated with expensive clothing at limited supply, amalgamating with the Generation Y yearning for individuality and equality. This has allowed niche streetwear brands to grow on a basis of supply and demand taking over the community, some overtaking major high street brands. Okay, ready to go? Alright, um, my name's Nicole, I am the owner of Hollywood Exports Preston. And why do you think that most millennials are so focused on the I think the main reason now is social media. I think people tend to plan their outfits around uh, having photos taken and posting them of themselves on their social media. So what we find now is people actually plan an outfit, put it together, take a picture and don't actually wear it. So I think that now people are able to express themselves via their social media more. Uh, that's become much more important in people wanting to stand out and be individual in their dress sense. 
why do you think your shops are popular and there's so many high street shops available? So I think that a lot of people do now tend to shop online um, and what we offer is something that's quite hard to get right if you shop online. Um, every item is different, sizing is also different. For example, someone might have a pair of jeans they've washed a million times, so the size it says on the label doesn't actually reflect the size of the jeans. So people like to come in, try things on. They also like to play around with their style and fashion as well and I quite like that, putting different outfits together. So that's why I think we stand out a little bit from what is generally offered on the high street. Do you think the style would play a large role in the way the Lenny was dressed, for example, in the 90s clothing? Definitely. I think that there's music videos that are still played now from the 70s and 80s. I think movies are very popular in uh, TV shows where people see a certain fashion and they want to replicate it themselves. Um, and that's why what we do is so great because they don't have to buy a copy of something. They can buy the actual thing from the 80s that was worn then. So yeah, definitely, I think that's true. What do you think is the most important part of an outfit? Um, that's really difficult. I don't know. I don't think anything is. I think it's. Um, it all depends on who you are and what you like to wear. Some people have, for example, one pair of Levi's and they dress their outfit around it. Other people have one pair of boots that they dress their outfit around. So. I think for each person it's different. Me personally, I don't have anything. But you think the reason individuality is so popular among this generation is that they're more accepted than the past four years? Definitely. We don't label anything men's or women's in our shop. Everything is uh, unisex. I think we're in a generation now of understanding more about gender and about what is um, supposed to be men's or women's. Now I think people aren't interested. They pick up something and if they like it, they wear it. And that's brilliant. So yeah, I think that's, that's definitely true. How would you define individuality in the I would say it's how you put an outfit together. Um, people now don't look at clothes and think, well, that goes with that. It's very much random. People wear very odd things, so I think that's where it comes from, is the, the combination of the outfit rather than the individual item itself. If you ask anybody about streetwear, the most likely brand to come up is Supreme. Starting as a standalone skate shop in Manhattan, it was founded by James Jabaya in 1994 and became the embodiment of downtown culture in NYC. Supreme grew in popularity all over the globe and as of 2017 is valued at around 1 billion US dollars. Supreme part of this, this, this store. Well, Supreme basically is a skateboard shop, um, one of the first of the 90s. Uh, skateboard only, um, no skateboards, rollerblades and we pretty much cater to all skaters, you know. Um, our store, our image pretty much is trying to be clean, you know, clean cut, everything good. Why don't you, you show me your stuff? Okay. Well, a big um, thing. First of all, who's, who's designing those stuff? Well, we have different designers, and we don't design any of the clothes ourselves, except for Supreme. Uh, most of the companies that we carry are skateboard companies and distributors who have the companies and clothing. And um, we just distribute by selling the retail store pretty much. Thanks to its growing popularity, Supreme were able to popularise a new way of marketing in the clothing industry. This followed the technique of supply and demand, however, with a twist. Supreme knew they were popular and used this to their advantage. They purposely limited their supply massively in comparison to their demand, guaranteeing that each clothing drop would sell out almost instantly, which meant the clothes became much more valuable as they were limited releases. This made other brands follow suit, and brands like Adidas, Nike, and the North Face have limited releases that sell out almost instantly. This has led to the creation of resellers and hype beasts. I don't know much about the project, but I'm just going to say my little piece on being a hype beast basically. I wouldn't consider myself a hype beast, but I've been into streetwear for a long time. I started out with like Supreme because my friends kind of introduced me to it and I liked the fact, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I got into it because I could make money out of it, but I liked the idea of like people wanting clothes so much that once it had sold out, there was like a whole secondhand market. And yeah, I started making money selling it and over time I got a feel for the brand and actually started liking some of the clothes uh, and it's just inspired me so like the music the culture the lifestyle everything surrounding it i feel represents me quite well so i got really into the community uh, i have my own brand muddy clout uh, it's where i mix like cartoons and streetwear 
So I'd put like Patrick from Spongebob in a Supreme boxes and stuff like that. I just started out as a bit of a joke, but people kind of caught onto it. So I started turning it into like a proper shop. And I have a YouTube channel where I make streetwear related videos to kind of, I guess, boost interactions. I can push people back to my Instagram and that kind of thing. Uh, the brands that I'm into are like Bape, Supreme, Palace. Um, just kind of the standard ones, not really high-end fashion just because I don't have the money for that at all. If people are trying to get into that kind of thing, I would say avoid just buying random stuff from Supreme and trying to sell it because so many kids are trying to do that now that you're probably not going to make money. I think hypebeasts are the worst type of people because they just ruin the culture for everyone else. Why is that? They just keep focusing on all this materialistic things like, you know, the streetwear is like focused on like skating, surfing, you know, being really chill about everything, but they keep like hyping everything up like their name suggests and it's, it's just really annoying. Do you think uh, resellers are partly to blame for that as well? Not really. I think resellers are like the entrepreneurs of this new, of like this new generation because they're taking the initiative to buy the clothes as soon as they come out and then they're making a shit ton of profit because people still want to buy the clothes. Would you say that streetwear now, in the way it's been like collected and held onto and then sold for loads, is similar to how we're, like paintings and art used to be? Um, it's kind of hard to tell because like paintings, they are appreciated the longer they stay around and they just keep going up in value but some like some clothes they might not have that same of value and that same sense of style might change and it's really hard to dictate whether things are going to be popular in a couple of months or in a couple of years. But do you be, do you think there's like some pieces or some shoes that are just timeless and will st stick around for like ever? It depends. Shoes like let's say Air Force Ones that are like have almost infinite possibilities to be customised and things like that. I feel like they're going to just stay around forever just because people will still realise new things to do with them but other shoes like these new like really modern looking shoes they're probably going to go out of fashion in a couple of years when the new one comes along. With the new subculture emerging streetwear has branched out into more styles than just name brands. It has influenced previous styles and trends to return for a second wind. Nostalgia has always been a great way of marketing but recently it has sparked a new style in the youth that allows a cheap alternative to the expensive brand names and haunting reseller prices. My name is Lucy. I don't know anything about streetwear. I just know the basic things. So like, I know some brands. So you've got like Supreme, Comme des Garcons. But personally, I, I'm more in for like style of things. So I stick to more vintage clothing and buying things cheap instead of paying like hundreds of pounds just for a T-shirt that has a little box logo saying Supreme on it. Like. I don't think it's worth the money, so I'd just rather go to a charity shop and get a top for like a tenner. Me be able to use that for ages before it goes, because it'll never go out of fashion. Do you think colour is very important in outfits? Yeah, a lot of my outfits, I try and coordinate the colours, so like pink with pink. In a lot of outfits, it's, it just creates a coherence between everything. So if you've got like colours coordinating, purple hoodie, purple lipstick, and like the use of makeup is also really good to really bring an outfit together. The vintage aesthetic of clothing has brought millennials a new way to dress, despite most of them not being born in the time when the style was in fashion. This has made people's styles completely different, as they are now able to mix and match their outfit to suit their personality. I feel like streetwear recycles itself quite a lot, so you'll find that what was cool back in the 80s has come back now, like around now, maybe a few years ago, all the like loud clothes and like Supreme did the uh, zebra joggers, but they would have been cool back in the 80s with the discos and stuff, and now they're coming back, and then overalls as well, they would have uh, been around quite a while ago, they were like obviously workwear, but then they've come into streetwear and then they're coming back now and I feel like it just keeps evolving, it keeps recycling itself, that's where it's at.